My father was uh, born in Ibaraki Ken, north of Tokyo, in a small mountain village. I think his parents were fairly well off in that they had quite a bit of land. So my dad, after high school, decided he'd like to go to the United States. He was able to get a job at the Pike Street Market. My mother, on the other hand, was born into a very poor family. When she became about 16 or so, I think, she went to work too, rather than go to school to help support the family. But she had, I think, an aunt who owned a restaurant in Seattle. They needed some help there, so they asked my mother to come help. My father used to go to the restaurant my mother was a waitress at, and they got to know each other, and eventually they got married. My mother was the hardest working person I've ever seen, trying to make life comfortable and untangled for all the kids. My father was very politically active within the Japanese community. I grew up in Seattle, Washington. My brother and I had a whole lot of freedom to do practically anything we wanted to do. And we liked to go fishing a lot and go swimming. And so we would walk all over the place. Well, that time was pretty confusing. When we first heard that all the Japanese might be forced to move off of the West Coast. My brother and I just could not believe that could be done because we did have some knowledge of the Constitution. We didn't take that really seriously. <laughs> I have no recollection of what I packed. From what I could uh, recall, it was pretty much just what we could carry. Um, when we were uh, both in high school, my brother and I sent to Minidoka so-called relocation camps, which I think should have been called concentration camps. We were stuck in this camp for like three years. During the summer times, it would get very, very hot. And here we were stuck into one room with uh, no walls or anything. And that was one of the biggest changes, I guess. Family life as we knew it was pretty much destroyed because, well, for one thing, my father wasn't even with us for the first two years in camp because he was one of the leaders of the community, so he was one of the first picked up and they were interned at a different camp. The biggest constraint was not having freedom. When the war ended, when I went back to Seattle, I didn't find any prejudice or anything like that. But then I didn't find any before when we were in Seattle. I guess I felt that if I was good at anything, I was good at doing artwork. I went to the Art Institute of Chicago, and my favorite painting teacher was married to my wife's favorite ceramic teacher. And one Thanksgiving, they invited her and me, and that's where we met the first time. I just did not want to bring up my kids in Chicago because I remember how free it was growing up in Seattle. The reason I wrote that little pamphlet about the internment so they wouldn't forget that the freedom of people could be taken away even in this country, even if the Constitution says that you can't do that, Waiting for 953 nights, I was disappointed after listening to the radio news 
expecting to hear that the uprooting of 112,000 Japanese Americans from their homes, businesses, jobs, and communities, and held without charge, save one, of Japanese ancestry was unconstitutional and we would be allowed to return home. But finally, finally on the 954th night, it happened. The WRA announced that the internment camps would be closed, but alas, alas, we had no home to return to.